Welcome everyone to once again a discussion about the anime from 2022's spring season. Today on the docket, we'll be discussing Spy X Family or Spy Family. I never know in these kind of like titles if you're supposed to like say the X or not. Like I just I just don't know, like Hunter Hunter or Hunter X Hunter or like Dog Scissors or Dog X Scissors. You know, I just never know, so I just always pronounce the X anyway. Um, but regardless, this particular show was quite swell. In fact, I think it's like everyone's favorite of the season. Um, the show, or not the show, the, the site that I'm watching it on has it rated as a 9.1 out of 10. So clearly everyone loves it. Now, if you remember correctly from the, uh, the first introduction thing, it's about... A spy known as Twilight, who goes by Lloyd, um, he has to, I don't remember if it's like assassinate this like opposing nation's official or if it's like he has to just like capture or kidnap him or something. Um, but anyway, in order to do so, this, this enemy politician, he only like leaves or like goes into the public area for very specific places, which one happens to be uh, the school that his kids attends, uh, like festival thing, like it's it's called uh, some scholar, like star scholars. I forget the exact the exact name for it. But in the school, they have like these awards where if you like go above and beyond, or you get like amazing grades and stuff, you top of the class, you get like this little star. And I think if you get like eight of them, I want to say. I forget the exact number. Um, you're one of the uh, the top scholars, and then they have this party at, like, I forget if it's the end of the year or end of the school uh, like time there or whatever, but eventually, uh, this party happens, and this politician goes there. So, our boy, Twilight, Lloyd Forger, he needs to have a family, or at least a daughter or a child, to enroll in the academy. So he goes to this orphanage, and he picks up this little girl named Anya, who just so happens to be an esper or a telepath or whatever you want to call it. She can read people's thoughts and whatnot, okay? Long and short of it. And he doesn't know that, but she can read his thoughts and knows that he's a spy. So he needs like a specific age child and all this other stuff, and they have to be like relatively smart. So using her esper abilities to get adopted from the orphanage, she says that she's the age that he needs, and she also, like, solves, uh, like, a, a puzzle using her uh, mind-reading abilities to read Lloyd's mind to know what the answers are so she can, like, show that she's really smart, right? Which is just great. Now, as time goes by, they uh, start hearing that it's kind of suspicious that they wouldn't have, like, a, a mother or figure around and at the same time, this mother figure named Yor just so happens to be a single uh, woman who is working at this like office building of some sort. And she starts hearing rumors about how the government is, you know, checking single women after a certain age for potentially being spies and whatnot. And uh, it kind of raises a flag if she's unmarried or at least doesn't have a boyfriend or something at that particular moment, at that particular age. And she's nearing that age and whatnot, so she's suspicious of that. But also, it's really bad because she just so happens to be an assassin as well. And so, these two happen to meet, and their uh, stuff happens to coincide with each other. And so they basically get married and uh, form a family with Anya there. And since Anya can read everyone's minds, she knows not only that Lloyd is a spy, but also that Yor is an assassin. And that's the uh, basic plot here. So it centers around Anya going to school, trying to get uh, the, the stars to become this uh, scholar thing and whatnot. But also around the, like, parallel, or not a parallel, the... Uh, the double lives that both Yor and Lloyd are living, where Yor goes on assassinations and Lloyd 
acts like he's a psychiatrist, but is really a spy going on spy missions and stuff. And it just causes all kinds of like chaos and stuff, especially since Yor is like bad at everything except for assassinations. And so she's like a, basically a muscle head, think of her as. Uh, and so she can like train Anya to like be good in sports. But since Anya is still like a little kid, even with proper training, she doesn't have like the, uh, the strength or the like, coordination to really do anything. And so it's, it's really cool to, you know, see them interact and whatnot. It's also just adorable as hell and like wholesome at times, but also like not wholesome at times because of, you know, the spy work and the assassination work. But when it comes to the family, it's really wholesome and really adorable. And Anya is just cute as hell, hilarious in everything she does because she like uses her knowledge of, you know, reading minds to like do things and manipulate people like do that. Like she, she does it in like a childish way though. She's not like too good at it. So it's just mwah, chef's kiss. Now there were some episodes where like I started to lose interest. Um, it was particularly the ones where it was like uh, just Anya specifically going to school where there wasn't too much spy or assassination stuff really happening, um, where she was just going to school and not much happened. Like, the first episode or two of her in school was fine, but then, like, a little bit more was just kind of mundane. I think there was one episode where they uh, did some volunteer work, and I think I skipped through a lot of the volunteer work stuff because it was just kind of repetitive. But at the end, I watched because it was a, a key to various things and whatnot, you know, shit. But anyway, it was great. And, I mean, it's, it's, if you're not watching Spy Family this season, like, I don't know what's wrong with you. Like, you should do it. Yeah. Like, everyone else is doing it. Clearly a great show. It, it just blends in so many different, like, things together. It got action, it's got, you know, wholesomeness and slice of life stuff. It's got, you know, the, the spy mystery kind of stuff going on. It's got uh, suspense and thriller. It's, it's just got everything um, packed into like one. It's even got like romance in a way because there's the, the dynamic between Lloyd and Yor and like a kind of will they actually get feelings for each other since they're just doing this play marriage thing or is it just like strictly business work? And over the course, you can kind of see character development as, you know, they kind of grow closer as a family and not just as their individual, you know, beings using each other for various things. Uh, it's just great. It's just an overall great show. And, uh, yeah. It's a shame that it's only 12 episodes this season. I honestly do not know how in the hell seasons are decided on. Because this one should have had 24, and a couple of cuckoos should have had, like, 12. But instead, a couple of cuckoos has 12 episodes, and this one has 12, even though this one is, like, the best this season. Like, hands down. The best this season. I just don't understand it. Like, I don't know. Maybe there's just not enough uh, source material to go off of for Spy Family yet, and that's why they're not doing a 12 or uh, whole 24 episodes or they're going to wait. But actually, isn't Spy Family coming out in like another season or two with their second season? I forget. Let me, let me, let me look real quick. So, will there be a season two of Spy Family? Um... And suspect fall 2022 is when it's going to happen. It hasn't been officially announced according to this site I just pulled up. But, like, yeah. If fans are suspecting that there's going to be a, another season that soon, there has to be enough source material. Otherwise, they would be like, ah, it's going to be a while. Uh, anyway, that about does it for this one. Now, for the rest of the season... Uh, of the spring season, I basically only have, what is it, uh, three shows left that I'm watching. It's Summertime Rendering, uh, Shikimori's Not Just Cute, 
and then a couple of cuckoos. Now, as I said, a couple of cuckoos in summertime rendering, they're both 24 episode seasons. So I'm going to have to talk about them at the end of next season. However, Shikimori can't be this cute. Honestly, I have no idea when it's going to end. Episode 10 came out today, but it's 12 episodes long. However, like they've done like a 0.5 episode twice so far, an episode 6.5 and episode 8.5, which has delayed things. And so now I'm not sure if it's going to like be two weeks or if it's going to be like three weeks, because who knows if they're going to do another 0.5 at some point, right? If they've already done two in a 12 episode series, who the hell really knows? I just want it to be over and done with. But we can move on to the next season, you know, but uh, so possibly in two weeks. I'll talk about that show. And uh If not, then maybe it'll be three weeks or four weeks from now. Hopefully not four weeks, but you never know with delays and all that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, anyway, that'll do it for me for now, everyone. So thank you all for listening. And uh, until next time, whether it be two weeks from now or if the new season starts and we happen to get two weeks in on or two episodes in on you know another episode another season of a show then uh so be it i'll talk about that one first but uh next up should be shikimori unless the next season decides to come out before that one finishes ending anyway thank you all for listening bye for now Ta-ta!